Hey, it's Greg Torres. I'm in Parker Woods. This is a Cincinnati park, and so I'm out here. Um, a few years ago, me and a buddy, we cleared out a lot of the invasive species in this part of the woods here and um, removed the English ivy and the garlic mustard and the honeysuckle. There's still some problematic plants, but after that, we collected a bunch of seeds from the Civic Garden Center and specifically bloodroot and wood poppy and brought them out here and distribute them so that the ants could take them and move them underground. We made a great video about it and we're probably going to make a follow-up because the results were pretty successful. But I'm here today mostly to talk about one of the plants that we distributed here and it is a stunner. So let's check it out. So you can kind of see them already. The plant that I'm wanting to make a video about is this one right here. And they're all around here now that the seeds have taken. It's been about two years since we set seeds out. So this plant is called wood poppy. It's also got a couple other names, celandine poppy, which I tend not to use because there's a very pernicious invasive species called lesser celandine, and I don't want people to be confused between the two. So we're going to stick with wood poppy, or the scientific name is Styloforum diphylum. There's a bunch of them through here, and they're quite nice. Styloforum just refers to the little style here, the female part of the plant. It's quite large on this flower compared to a lot of other flowers. Now there's three species in the Styloforum genus, and this is the only one in North America. The other two are in Asia, but they look very similar. They all have four petals, a long style like this. Many, many, many anthers. Oh. See all the leaves, they emerge from one central point. And they're very fuzzy, very, very fuzzy. There's a rhizome underneath here. It's very thick and it tends to ooze yellow sap. The leaves are lobed and kind of wavy. They almost have a ferny appearance when they first start to emerge. And you see a number of them through here. The flower is quite big for a wildflower. It's almost inch and a half, sometimes two inches across. Diphylum. The other part of its scientific name refers to these two leaves that come out right at the base of where the flowers emerge from. You can see it's characteristic of all of them that have the flowers coming out of the center. Oh, a little spider. But diphylum just refers to those two leaves. Di and then phylum. Two leaves. This family's in the Popperbaceae family of plants, the poppies. It kind of looks like a poppy. But moreover, if you check out the sap on the plant, it's bright yellow and actually will stain. A lot of the poppy family plants have some really interesting sap qualities, which kind of makes them toxic, which is a good reason that we use this plant in a restoration effort. Deer tend not to molest them and leave them alone. Once the flower is pollinated, an interesting thing about the flower, there is no nectar, it's just pollen. Now pollen is a very important food source for early bees, young bees. And so certain many bees will be using the pollen from this plant. Once it's pollinated, what you end up with is this real fuzzy looking seed pod. It looks like a fuzzy cucumber and it tends to hang down like this. You can still see the style from where it gets its name from at the tip there. Now the seed pod as it matures will open up. It'll pop open, releasing all the seeds. Kind of four flaps open up and all the seeds pour out onto the ground. The seeds contain an eliasome, which is just this funny little appendage that ants find and they like to eat it. So they take the seeds and then move them underground.
So again, this is Styliformum diphylum wood poppy. This makes a great garden plant, and I'll probably make a, an additional clip here showing it in my own personal garden at home. Really fills out and it seeds out, so you can get a lot more plants from it from just a couple of them.